If you remember in 2017 we built this rad 187 Polini that we put in uh, our Stella. It was a great engine, it had like carb intake, pipe to an exhaust, the whole shebang. And it ripped. In fact it ripped so hard, it ripped our cases apart. We had a long tear along the seat of the input shaft which continued and really literally just split the cases in, in half almost. It was a mess. But out of bad often comes good. So I got new cases, got to work, and got to mount this really cool new Pinasco RX190. The ports on that thing are huge, and we actually went ahead and mounted a 34 millimeter carp that was so big that I had to hammer a dent into the frame just to make it fit. This thing was insane. It had so much compression when you kick it, it would kick back. To the point that I couldn't even kick it with normal shoes on. I had to wear my boots. Careful, bud. Damn. And that's about all the footage I have of this thing running. It is an insane engine. We went to a couple of rallies, including a Mary Vespa, and we found out that this on the street is just too much, especially for the person that I built it. Or for anyone. So following a police ticket, we decided to shelf this engine and build something a little bit more rideable and less violent. Enter the Malasi 221. I grabbed my old P200 cases and I did extensive port work to it. I actually closed down the old ports using steel reinforced two component epoxy and basically just cut out brand new ports that would fit the old Molossi 210 that we then would stroke up to 60 millimeters and run a MRP intake with V-Force 4 reads. I had a blast doing this port work because I could haha <laughs> blast use my sandblaster to work out a really nice blasted finish. The final assembly was streamed live on our channel. If you subscribe and you press that little bell button, you'll be notified next time we'll go live. And this is the culmination of all this work. 221 cc in a bike that originally only had 150. The engine is sucking air through a 30 millimeter carburetor. It's being ignited by the Molossi Vest Power ignition that we used on last year's engine and is breathing out of the Pinasco Touring box exhaust. Resulting in a very smooth power curve just shy of 25 horsepower and high torque. Evidently, this thing is wicked fast. This sounds great. The gearbox with a 2463 primary transmission and a short fourth makes this thing go up to 50 in no time. And you can just cruise along at that speed 50, 55, 60, whatever, without stressing the engine out too much. But if you want to have a little fun, a little flick of the throttle at, at low RPM just raises the front wheel up.
In order to keep a constant eye on the engine beat RPM or temperature, we put in this wicked trail tech vapor. Putting this in was quite the endeavor, so let me show you how I did it. The main idea here is to remove the original speedo and the silly cluster of wires underneath the headset and put in one of these, Trail Tech Zone Vapor. A onboard computer that can monitor engine RPM, engine temperature, and it also has a pickup for a magnetic speedo. The motorcycle handlebar mounting system is totally useless to us. In order to make the vapor sit nicely in our handlebar cover, We'll start off by taking our speedo out. Then we'll draw a center line, so it makes it easier to align the vapor. And we draw out the outline, which we're then using a Dremel to remove material so the vapor will slide right in there. And after I got it to slide in effortlessly, I needed to figure out a way to mount it in place. And after some back and forth, I came up with the idea of dual purposing the threads that I used to attach this cover to your normal headset. So I drilled through the brass inserts with threads and basically recut the threads all the way through so I could put bolts in from the top and from the bottom. The bottom would be for your headset mount and the top would be to mount a aluminum plate. After some shaping and bending the plate into angle, it was time to put the vapor in place. So I put some thread rods and some nylon spacers on it. I mounted the plate using some M6 bolts and got ready to attach the vapor in place. This took some back and forth to get the right angle and the right spacing. And eventually got it so it was nice and flush with the cover. One problem however persisted, which is the gaping hole on the top and on the bottom. So I took the old speedo and drew out and cut out one or maybe two <laughs> discs that would fit the original shape. And then I used the little computer to mark out where it would sit and cut out basic shapes that would fit in and cover these holes. I then cut out eight pieces of plexiglass, which were a little bit wonky, but they would be enough to fit the top and the bottom cover piece. In order to get it to 10 millimeter thick, I laminated it with plastic cement. And then I marked out the basic shape and roughly cut it with a table saw. This whole process and working with the table saw on plexiglass was a little tricky. But I put the final shape on it on my belt sander and I got it to fit nicely. After I rounded off the edges and a little bit of back and forth, I got both pieces to just slide right in there. It turned out that laminating four pieces of plexiglass together was perfect. Look how nice and flush this whole thing is. I then gave the whole cover a little bit of a paint job. My finishing is still lacking, but it's gonna do its job fine. And I painted both pieces in black too. So before I put them in place, I put some glue on them. And they're now right in there. I can still remove the, va the vapor with the two bolts if I need to. So in order to put this to the test, I mounted it on the bike and took it right to the track. So strap in and let me take you on a lap around the G&G Cardway.
Ultimately, as it is, this bike now is fantastic to ride. It got great power, great suspension, great brakes. It performs wonderful on the roads. And if you want a little bit more, you can take it on a track day. Heck, you could even ride it to the track day, ride all day, and without being too tired, just ride home. The Vapor, the onboard computer, really is a great addition uh, overall to the bike. Not only does it give the bike that kind of techy look, but you can also monitor your RPM and your temperature at all time and you have a real peace of mind to know that you're far away from overheating and blowing up all that hard work you put in the engine. And in the end, this project was a total success. Especially because... I love it! Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Join us next week where we're going to have a little fun with a shootout between the P200 and the Orange Stella. Until then, don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.